Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this hearing of the City Council Committee on Transportation. I'm Danis Rodriguez, the chair of this committee. Today, the committee will be voting on four pieces of legislation related to parking regulations, cycling, and sidewalk per harvest. The first bill proposed intro 84-A, sponsored by Council Member Chain Dutch, sorry, would bring much needed transparency to the parking regulations around city schools, especially during the summer months. Some parking regulations are only in effect while the school is in section, but motorists are not always clear when this is the case. The proposed introduction will require the departments of education and the departments of transportation to post on their website information on when public and charter schools are in section. The second bill, proposed intro 570-A, sponsored by Council Member Mark Traeger, will help frustrate New Yorkers who get ticketed for parking on the street that have illegal parking signs. The bill will create the affirmative defense for parking violations issue to motorists who inadvertently park their cars in a spot with illegal parking signs as long as there are no other legible signs that apply to the parking space on the same block. The third bill proposed intro A86-A, sponsored by Council Member Rafael Espinar, will establish a pilot program in Brooklyn for the installation of pet harbors on sidewalks adjustment to commercial establishments. This legislation will allow the owners of a small pet to leave them unattended in a safe and in closed shelters for a short period of time while they enter the commercial establishment to shop. Finally, proposed intro 1457A, sponsored by Council Member Carlos Menchaca, will establish that cyclists crossing an intersection must follow pedestrian control signals, except where prohibited by traffic control device and as long as the cyclist yields to pedestrians in the crosswalk. I would like to thank the administration and all the stakeholders for their work to help improve the language of these bills. At this time, I will call on a sponsor to make statements on their bills. Uh, my colleague would like to say anything, and if not, anyone? Councilman Menchaco? What? Yeah, go for it. Let's go that way. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Councilmember Mark Traeger. I want to thank uh, Chair Rodriguez and the committee and the staff for your work uh, to support my bill, uh, Intro 570, in relation to illegible parking signs. This legislation will resolve a frustration for residents that receive a parking ticket when there's illegible signage. When a parking sign is illegible, people don't have notice that a restriction is in effect but can still receive a ticket. It is within the, the Department of Finance's discretion to dismiss these tickets, but they're not required to do so. And many people don't know that they might be able to get their ticket dismissed for illegible signs, and the standards for dismissal can be unclear. There should be more pressure on the New York City Department of Transportation to maintain parking signs citywide, and the onus should not be on taxpayers and residents for the basic responsibilities of government. This, this issue speaks to greater problems within DOT. For too long, there have been unnecessary long wait times for signs to be updated or even installed or placed. And quite frankly, we deserve legible signs. That sounds basic, but basic things sometimes do not happen. We've heard from a number of people that signs are faded and completely illegible. Residents don't know what the parking regulation is and get hit with the ticket due to the city's lack of maintenance. This legislation holds DOT accountable for replacing signage that is illeg illegible and allows residents an option to contest a ticket by displaying with a photo that the sign is indecipher indecipherable. It allows, allow, it allows people to fight a ticket by showing that both signs of the sign were illegible, parking signs are double-sided, and that there are no other signs on the same side of the block that apply to the same violation in the same spot. Drivers absolutely have to do their part and very, the biggest part, to be safe, responsible, and follow all traffic laws, including parking only in appropriate places. This bill does not excuse unacceptable behavior. However, DOT must maintain its infrastructure in making sure parking signage is available and clear. It is a common sense solution to holding DOE responsible for upholding the infrastructure of our city. And I thank the chair for his time. 
Thank you, Chair, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, it's been, I want to say, almost four years since the idea came to us from the community of bicyclists in the neighborhoods that we represent uh, with the idea to use pedestrian leading intervals um, as part of our infrastructure for safe bicycling in our city. Uh, many, many conversations with advocates, many conversations with the Department of Transportation and the NYPD finally led to a final version that was a result of a study that was conducted over the last year. That study has been positive. The question that the study answered was, is it safe for people to be a bicyclist to use a leading pedestrian interval that allows for seven seconds uh, for pedestrians to cross an intersection um, and allow for bicyclists to use that? What we found was that bicyclists were already using this. Uh, and so this law actually is catching up to cultural normatives right now uh, in our city that are all about safety. And so for me right now, I want to say thank you to the advocates, and I want to read some of their comments uh, that they've been tweeting out about this bill. The bill, the LPI bill here, will make New York City intersections safer for all cyclists and no cost to pedestrian safety, as shown by the DOT. Cyclists will be allowed to proceed with pedestrian signals before turning, multi-ton vehicles, common sense. Thank you to the city council. Uh, and it's true. This will not require any new additional signage. This will just be law. Uh, the pilot did put signage up and cost a little bit of money, but now every LPI will be, uh, with this bill, and it pass if it passes the city council tomorrow, will be available to everyone. I want to read uh, from Makes, Make Queens Safer. Uh, we've paid this ticket a few times, which means that there was enforcement on this from the NYPD, but they say, teach our children the importance of getting ahead of traffic behind us as it is a deadly merge. The LPI bill allows riders to be seen, to avoid turns in the conflict, uh, turn conflict, and safely take a position in the travel lane. We recommend that everyone rides this way. So this is all part of our participatory democratic process, and I want to say thank you to the people of our communities that bring great ideas to us as council members, their legislators, and that we work with city agencies together as one. Uh, this, is, this is the example of what we're going to keep doing in the future, and I welcome more ideas as we bring good, sensible, common sense, and low-cost safety measures to our city. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And before, before calling on the vote, I also would like to take this opportunity to invite all New Yorkers and my colleagues here in order to join us in our third transit rider tour that will happen August 7 and 8, which is going to be a 24 hours tour from 7 from 7 in the morning to 7 p.m. and on the 8, uh, 7 to 7 p.m. As we have done it before, uh, our colleagues will be allowed to or had this opportunity to highlight any train stations that we feel uh, are important to bring to the attention. So again, all New Yorkers in, are invited to be part of this great initiative that together with the advocate and our committee, if this is we're gonna be doing for the third year. Uh, with that, I recommend a yes vote on all the bills. And be before, let me also acknowledge, I'm sorry. you like to say? I have a question. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, so uh, my colleague just mentioned in his statement, he was talking about safety, and certainly that is paramount to the council's concern in any legislation that we do. Um, but also um, the fact that there'd be no costs associated with it. I, I honestly, when it comes to safety, no one, uh, you can't quantify that with costs. What I would like to see certainly would be education because you're creating an entirely new paradigm, not just for the cyclists, but for pedestrians and as well as drivers and, and for folks not to be aware. Quite frankly, most folks that use the road are uh, other than uh, the daily cyclists 
aren't familiar with what LPI is, all right, and, and so forth. I, I would really like to see uh, that happen, that we have a, uh, a concerted effort to educate the, the folks that share the road when that happens, um, and, you know, as we move forward. So that, that was okay. not necessarily a question, but a statement on that. All right. Thank you. And, and in the fall, we're going to be addressing many other initiatives related to expanding the opportunity not only to protect the cyclists, but also making a city bike and other cycling uh, in New York City affordable. One of the things that we're going to be exploring, and, and we're looking both a council member Levin and I to hold a hearing very soon on the fair fair. Mm -hmm. And we definitely would like to expand fair fair also to include to city bike to make it affordable because what the previous study has said is true. Most black and Latino has not been included with that opportunity and we feel that we have this great opportunity and we're gonna be working on it. So uh, I would like to acknowledge the council member that's been here, who are here, council member Cabrera, Dodge, Espinal, Cool, Levin, uh, Menchaca, Miller, uh, Reynoso, and Diaz. And with that, I recommend a yes vote. And Rosen, sorry. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on transportation. All items are coupled. Chair Rodriguez. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Ku. Aye. Levin. Aye. Menchaca. I, and I want to add uh, thank you to Councilmember uh, Miller who brought up the education piece and part of the conversations that we're having are about saving lives and there have been um, over a dozen people that have died on the streets of New York City and so my, um, my commitment continues to be for a, a true Vision Zero. Um, I want to read another really quick tweet, someone saying, um, Peter Kaufman saying, treating bikes as equivalent to cars as has been standard practice for decades has been proven to be wrong, dangerous, and too often fatal. Uh, this bill recognizes that bicyclists are not motorists. And so this is the kind of education that we want to do to really understand how we can be safe on our streets and really bring um, uh, ownership to the past and changing that for the future. And for that reason, I vote aye on all the, all the bills today. Miller. I'm, I'm going to be a stain. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Mr. Grant. Uh, I just want to say data is real, the LPI is work, and I want to congrat congratulate cyclists uh, um, because we today we made them a little safer. Uh, and I want to congratulate uh, Carlos Menchaca for the work that he did. I do have uh, a concern in 886A. Um, which speaks to pet, allowing pet harbors to be placed on sidewalks adjacent to commercial establishments. Um, while I am supportive of this legislation and will be voting I, I want to make sure that I speak regarding sidewalk space um, being used uh, and the oversighting of street furniture and objects um, in sidewalks. Uh, we all know that pedestrian space is limited. Uh, what we should be doing is considering uh, using uh, streets um, and spaces that are now used for private personal parking uh, to accommodate um, any needs that we have in the city of New York, like these pet harbors, and not use the pedestrian space. Uh, but we've seen this heat wave, we've seen what it means, and allowing for uh, animals that are extremely vulnerable and can't speak for themselves to have a safe space is something that I don't want to vote against. So uh, I want to vote aye on all. Thank you. Rose. Aye. Diaz. I, even though I, I'm, I'm always the first one that gets here, I'm always the last one to be called, but I'm voting yes. By vote of 10 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention, all items have been adopted on today's agenda. That is hearing is adjourned.